day two of no social media we just finished breakfast and now we're gonna go work out me and nate got a pass at a gym nearby that i actually didn't even know existed so if i like it i might sign up for it full time in the new year but yes but for now we're just gonna check out for a few days while he's with me this week i was actually thinking of going to get some art supplies today but london's basically shut down because the christmas day and boxing day bank holidays carried over so well, it's not shut down, but um, like today, I think it's the Christmas or the bank Boxing Day bank holiday te technically carried over. So a lot of places aren't open today. I think shopping generally is open, but I'm not sure about that either. But anyways, the, the stores I want to go to aren't open. <laughs> so let's go do a workout. I haven't been to a gym, like a proper gym in forever. It's always so intimidating. I don't know. Anyways, I never got back into it after lockdown. Let's go. Oh, just rainy. <laughs> Typical London, it is raining, but we are heading out to watch a movie because we have time. <laughs> I was just saying to Nate how it just feels like we have so much more time. I don't know. Like, I think normally it's like before you eat or before we eat dinner, we scroll on the phone. After we eat dinner, we scroll on the phone for a bit. After we do every activity, there's like five minutes rest of scrolling but or like probably longer than five minutes but anyways we um just worked for half the day and then i made the tofu soup for dinner and now we're going to cover garden to watch a movie because it's only playing there what she said the harvey weinstein movie yesterday um but anyways today we are going to have lunch at my favorite place that you see in the vlog so many times kanam pocha and then i'm i need to get my glasses fixed um i broke one of the stems so i need to go to ace and tate to fix that i also was thinking about stopping by the art store but it's all the way to hackney so i don't have to go today if i don't feel like it but we'll see we'll see
All right, we are back home now. I we're gonna go get dinner in a bit, but today was kind of a tiring day because the reason I went out was to fix my glasses, and then I forgot to bring them. So then, anyways, we went all the way across town for no reason, and now we we went to Hackney where I wanted to go to the art store. Um, so I heard that this was one of the best places to get art supplies, especially if you want. Um, especially if you want a large canvas so i'll show you guys what i got i didn't get too large of a canvas because you know i haven't painted in forever so i didn't want to start off too big but i got uh this one which is 20 by 30 inch um i wanted to put it up on the fireplace um i saw a, an art piece in a gallery in germany i want to say was it the Lud ludwig Ludwig Museum that I was kind of inspired by and kind of wanted to try and recreate. It was like this painting that was basically white and um, they had like kind of the numbers drawn out in it. I'll try to, I'll put a picture. I think I took one when I was there. Um, so I wanted to try and recreate that and then just painting for fun. Um, I got me and Nate a canvas so that we can paint something for fun. Maybe tomorrow or the day after we have time. And then um, I just got like a really cheap brush set. This was like a good deal. It was 11 pounds, 30 at six. Definitely not the best quality brushes, but I think for our skills right now, this is good enough to get us started. If I get super into it, I'll buy another one. Um, I got two palettes. I got a little one and then I got a big one, mainly because for the big painting I'm doing. I think for the smaller ones, this is fine, but and they can both have, can both use it. Um, I also got a big brush for doing like a wash of color at the beginning or to cover a larger surface area. So I got this, um, I forgot what it's called. There's a name for these. And then I also got some palette knives because I want to create like texture in the number painting. And I didn't want to invest in like a nice quality one. So I just got these plastic ones for cheap. Um, I also got kind of like a detailed um, brushes. These were a little bit more expensive, but I think if you're doing like more details in paintings, this is necessary. Um, and this set doesn't really come with super detailed brushes. And my camera is dying. And then, okay, what else did I get? Hurry, hurry. I got this molding paste, which there was like examples at the store and I thought it looks pretty cool. And I think this could help create the texture so I don't have to use too much acrylic paint. I got two pencils, um, one for like just, just outlining and then also good for sketching. So I got an HB and a 2H pencil. I used to take art classes, that's why I kind of know what I need. Um, I did it for like 10 years, but I haven't done it in the last 10 years. But I also got some colors since me and Nate are both doing it to together and we have like two pretty large canvases. I didn't buy one of the smaller kits. I just, all right, I shouldn't have bothered rushing. I had to change the uh, battery anyways. So paints, last thing I got was paint. Um, I didn't want to get a smaller kit because we have like a lot of canvases covered. So I got a big tube of white because the painting I want is mainly white. <laughs> And then I got a brown because also in that painting I feel like behind it is a layer, a wash of brown. So I got brown and also a bit of black. So I got a bigger tube of brown and black. And then we got um, the standard like um, primary colors, a yellow, a blue, a red. And then um, they didn't have a smaller tube of green so we got a big tube of green here. So yeah, that should be fun to start painting again. It's been a while. Um, and also I find acrylic paint is like the most forgiving because you could layer it once it's dried so you could cover up any mistakes. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna get dinner, probably just read a book and head to bed after. Good morning guys, happy New Year's Eve. Oh, it's a little too bright over here. Me and Nate are getting ready to go out to go pick up some fish. So uh, we decided not to do anything like go out this New Year's Eve, but we were thinking of doing like an omakase at home. We were looking at some nice dinners and they were just so overpriced for New Year's Eve. Um, so we're like, you know what? Let's just spend that money on buying some really high quality fish and 
make omakase at home so that should be um it's our first time so i'm not sure how it'll go but i think it'll be a fun activity um we're gonna go to this fish place in notting hill that's quite well known for having sashimi grade fish or like i've heard it from some girl on tiktok but um we will see there's also another fish store near there if that one fails me i feel like a lot of seafood will probably be sold out because people are planning for Christmas Eve dinners, like not omakase, but other seafood dishes. So we'll see what we can get today. But yeah, let's go get some seafood. busy and they're more busy than I thought and they didn't have too much in stock so we're actually gonna go to a different store we just ended up getting some tuna there but uh, we're gonna check out a different grocery store to get other stuff we have some of us how wandered into um, Portobello market on a Saturday quite busy shelter from the rain a bit and having lunch um, that the shop wasn't very hopeful looking for sashimi grade fish so we're gonna try and head to another one um, but it's not too far so it should be okay but yeah we'll see but first food Time to start preparing the omakase at home. So we ran all around London today to get fish and realized the best place to really get it is just at a Japanese supermarket. <laughs> so first we went to the Notting Hill fish shop which actually didn't have too much. I think they were just low on supply because it was New Year's Eve and it was like super busy in the supermarket actually. And then after that we went to like a fishmonger nearby but the fish didn't look fresh enough for sashimi to be honest so we gave up on that and then we were gonna go to japan center in westfield because that was close to notting hill but to be honest it looked more so like a grab and go type of place and that although you know we kind of that's what we ended up with but anyways um we decided to go to this japanese supermarket instead that looked a little more hopeful based on the google reviews and we were right so there we were able to get the majority of the stuff some of it pre-sliced, which kind of wasn't what we wanted, but you know what, to be honest, that's probably what we need. Um, so yeah, highly recommend going to the Japanese, this Japanese store if you're looking for sashimi. We got a nice block of salmon there, and then um, I would actually say that the Naniho fish shop was great for a toro. So I think I saw on the Instagram that they just got a delivery of 
um, tuna, like a big blue fin tuna, one or two days ago. So that maybe that's why they had so much of it. But they had so much fatty tuna and like not so fatty tuna as well as well. So I think it's like chu toro and old toro. So we got a really fatty cut and a really lean cut as well. And it was a lot cheaper than if we had bought like pieces of the Japanese grocery store because I think they were selling like four pieces of otoro for I think like six pounds whereas we got like a big block for 15 pounds. So let me just show you guys what we're thinking and let's just see if we can execute it. Starting off with uh, the Naughty Hill fish, fish Shop, we got two of these um, blue finch tuna steaks. So this one is super fatty as you can see. I think maybe almost a bit too fatty. I need to really search up how to cook this. And then we got a piece of um, oh, so this actually, you know what? This was 20 pounds. Um, it was, well, 1940, and it was 100 pounds per kilogram. <laughs> um, and then this was 15 pounds, which was also 100 pounds per kilogram. Piece of not, not fatty tuna, which this could be good for tataki, or I think we're just gonna eat it on top of nigiri or as sashimi, so we'll, we'll think about that. So that's it, that's all we got at the Notting Hill fish shop. There wasn't too much salmon left, and I was hoping to get some scallops or like sweet shrimp, but they didn't have any of that, so we, d we went somewhere else. So at the Japanese store, we got the bulk of the other stuff. So whole, we got some octopus legs, so we'll slice that up, eat it as sashimi or on top of nigiri. Um, we also got a block of salmon, quite a chunky block too, and this was 11 pounds. Definitely enough for some sashimi, and maybe we'll do a tataki with this? I'm debating. One of them is going to be a tataki, and I'm not sure what, which one. Um, and then we got some sweet prawn sashimi, which will turn into sashimi enigiri. And then we got Nate's favorite. I'm not a huge fan, but um, this fish it is the surf clam sashimi so it's like the one that's like reddish and then lastly we got some scallops so this is quite a lot of scallops um this was six pound 12 for so 85 pounds per kilogram but um it looks like they've been sliced in half but they look pretty good and fresh and then I also picked up some seaweed, um, and this little pack was £2.71 um, as a little side. And then we also got some pickled ginger as a little side. So here's the game plan. Nate's gonna help me. I'm thinking I'll get started on the rice first because it has to cool also for a bit and, you know, uh, mix with the seasoning. So I'll make the rice first. And then I'm going to think about which one I'm gonna make for the tataki because I have to sear the sides and then also make the sauce and let the fish cool. So there's that. I need to prep spring onions, put them in ice so that they're prepared for um, as toppings and then some of the fish need slicing. So I'm gonna try and do that. Um, I'm gonna watch a video on it now, <laughs> but um, yeah, oh. And I started sharpening the knives. I just need to sharpen them a little bit more. Let's get started. All right, let's start on the rice. Sous chef. Oh, it's separated. I am just gonna sharpen my IKEA knives with my IKEA sharpener. Don't judge me. Thank you. 
I mean, this one we can just do, should we just do That's sashimi? Just like, like perpendicular. Yeah. Looks good. Because then the other way they did this, right? <laughs> like this? Mm-hmm. Oh, the knife isn't sharp enough. Mm -hmm. Shall we try a little? It's not, it's not sharp enough to but cut through. I think through. the fish that he had was way skinnier. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think you can do, yeah, thicker cuts for it. Get away first. Watch someone's like, no, you're. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, let's do four I think cuts. Has sushi. Yeah. It's so oily. It's breaking apart as I'm cutting it. Thin as possible. Oh, this one's easier. Oh, nice. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay. I don't know. Maybe that's. Just put it in here. Oh no, my knife is so not sharp. It's breaking up the cooked parts. Last step, making nigiri. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Apparently you go like this. Okay, and then we put the fish on our hand. No, uh, yeah, you put it right here, between your palm and your finger. <laughs> this feels so wrong. This feels wrong. It's too sticky. <laughs> I think our hand isn't wet enough, this hand. Oh, I did it! cooking now thank god here we have the salmon sashimi the fatty tuna we put some of the ebi shrimp on nigiri style as well and then the lean tuna and then we have over there scallops red surf clams octopus um this is the kind of not too greatly done salmon tataki um, the tuna tataki turned out pretty well. And then some seaweed salad that we got from the grocery store. 
some miso soup that I quickly made. And we have a platter of just the sashimi that we didn't turn into nigiri. Quite a hefty meal. Time to eat. And a bottle of plum sake to enjoy with it. Anyways, let's eat. With some green. Good. Okay. You might think fishy. With the ponzu sauce, it's not that fishy. The tuna is definitely a bit too fishy for me. Mm. I'll try the I'll try the one with the rice because I think the rice. I need to use my hands for this because it's just so delicate. Mm. Do you want some wasabi? Oh uh, yes. Mmm, mmm. The fatty one is really good. It's not fishy. Mmm. It's so fatty and melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Pink one is just a bit fishy. Let me try it again. Mmm. So good, right? Wow. Mm. Toro is my favorite fish. Mmm. Mmm. The salmon's good too. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I can feel it's breaking. <laughs> okay, let's just do our hands. Mmm. Mmm. Salad is really good. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, I feel better about this experience. Mm -hmm. At first, it's just like it seems like oh, the rice is too wet, it's too sweet, the fish is fishy, and then it's like oh, okay, pretty good. It all came together. <laughs>